ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله خير نبي ارسله ارسله الله تبارك وتعالى رحمه للعالمين وقال في حقه وما ارسلناك الا رحمه للعالمين يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم ان زلزله الساعه شيء عظيم يوم ترونها تذهل كل مرضعه اما ارضعت وتضع كل ذات حمل حملها فترى الناس سكارى وما هم بسكارى ولكن عذاب الله شديد اللهم اجرنا من عذابك يا رب العالمين الحمد لله على the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gathered us here today on this day the day of Jumu'ah the day of Friday and Arabic Jumu'ah comes up, comes from the word Jumu'ah which means to collect to gather to combine and Jumu'ah in the Islamic tradition uh, reminds us of two significant days uh, the first is what we call the day of the covenant or Yom Alas uh, in the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَيَأْخَذَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ بَنِي آدَمَ مِنْ ظُهُورِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّتَهُمْ وَأَشْهَدَهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ قَالُوا بَلَىٰ شَهِدْنَا أَنْ تَقُولُوا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ إِنَّا كُنَّا عَنْ هَذَا غَافِلِينَ And so this ayah over here speaks to us about the day of covenant in which before we were sent here on this earth our souls were gathered together and we were asked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Am I not your Lord? And all of humanity responded, uh, Bala, verily, indeed. And this day also signifies another day, which is the day that we will return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Yom al Qiyamah, the day of rising. And so on Yom al the day of the covenant, our souls testify to God's oneness, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's wahdaniyah. In the afterlife, our limbs are going to be coupled with that testimony. And our limbs and our body and our actions are going to testify whether or not that original testimony of faith was true. And that's why, the, and that's why uh, Yom Al-Jumma again uh, reminds us of these two days. It reminds us of our time here in the dunya, in which constantly we must be in a state where we are renewing our faith and that we are working towards that renewal through the external actions that are that our bodies embody. And so I guess just as the school year begins for some of us, if not most of us, uh, it's important to ask ourselves this question, this Quranic verse, Sa'ina Tat Harun, where are you going? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Man kana so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran by asking us this question is asking us to be cognizant of every step that we take in this world. And this is followed by a verse in which Allah says Whoever desires the fleeting life of this world, we will speed up whatever we will in it for whoever we wish. In the end, we have prepared for him torture and the hellfire, for him in which to burn, disgraced and rejected. But whoever desires the life to come, meaning the afterlife or paradise, and strives after it as he should in this world, as a true believing a person, their effort will be favored or accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so what this ayah reminds us of is it reminds us of the nature of this dunya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't call the dunya in this verse dunya. He calls it ajila. Ajila in Arabic comes from ajala or speed. Right? And if we actually took a moment to look at the word dunya as well, it relates to something that's lowly. And so, when we're seeking the material world, we need to ask ourselves, why are we seeking it? Are we seeking it for some benefit 
that will remain with us solely in this world? Or is it something that will be taken as a means to our afterlife? And if it's the case where we're solely fulfilling a desire, then that's what we know to be as instant gratification. And that's basically in short what social media is, right? And, you know, I'm guilty of this myself, but our Twitter, Instagram accounts, or Facebook accounts, where we're constantly seeking validation from others. We're constantly posting statuses or pictures so that people can give us likes. But we have to ask ourselves, what is it really in there for us that we're seeking? And that's not to negate, obviously, the benefits that come from the internet as well. Um, if we look at Ashira though, right? If we look at this word Ashira, the afterlife, in Arabic, Ashira means something that comes after. And in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the word Sa'a, which means to strive towards something. Meaning that if you're not striving for this dunya, and if you're actually striving for the afterlife, then you're striving for something that is to come, which means that that road will naturally into difficulty. So it's not instant, it's not something that will necessarily come immediately towards you, but it's something that we need to inculcate certain quality to, uh, to within ourselves so that we can achieve that desired goal. When the scholars talk about some of the preconditions or requirements in striving for the afterlife, they say that desire alone is not sufficient. Along with desire or will, there needs to be a commitment to faith. Commitment to faith requires that at times we will not see the wisdom behind why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put us not only in this world, but in the circumstances that He's put us in. The trials and tribulations that we face, right, will not necessarily be met with answers. But there is an element of patience, and there is an element of trust, and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put us in the circumstances that He has in this dunya, knowing that we have the capacity and the potential to see and look through it if our if our desire and if our objective is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran says that those who are afflicted by trial, not necessarily by death, we use this phrase a lot when people pass away and it is a sunnah to do so. But الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ When one of us is afflicted by trial or tribulation, what is our natural response? What should our response be? Indeed, we are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Indeed, we are returning to Him. And that's faith. And then the third thing they mention after will and after faith is action. And so when we are trialed or when we are in a state of tribulation, we need to ask ourselves, what is our response going to be in that moment? How are we going to react? Are we going to act with despair? Or are we going to act having hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And again, trusting that the, that the outcome might not necessarily be something that we want, but it might be something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes for us. And that is something that we should be content and satisfied with. At the end of this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, فَأُولَٰئِكَ كَانَ سَعِيهُمْ مَشْكُورًا so those who, whose objective is the afterlife, whose objective is paradise, whose objective is the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and, and, and doing so following the footsteps of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, then they are received by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's grace or favor. Now shukr or shakara means to thank. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't necessarily thank us for something that we do. In regards to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attribute of ash-shakur or ash-shakir, the Arabic goes, yati jazilan ala amr al He is the one who gives abundantly for little action that's done, for something small that's done. And we know in other traditions that when we extend our hand, or when we accept a footstep to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He runs towards us with ten. When we reach out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with little, He responds and He gives with tenfold, if not more. 
However, again, we need to constantly remind ourselves not to be in a situation, not to put ourselves in a situation of despair. Because when that happens, those are moments of what doubt, doubt, in which we begin to question our faith and our trust in God. This is why Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in another verse, "Waqalilun min ibadi ashabur." Thankful in, in every situation are those amongst the believers that are little in, in number. So actually, being in a state of gratitude in those situations isn't easy. All of us have faced some type of difficulty or trial. But those who are not, those who are patient through their trials, are not only patient to see what the outcome of the situation is, right, and then to thank Allah Subhanahu wa Taala after the outcome of the situation, right, has come, because that's usually what tends to happen. If something isn't going our way, we wait to see what happens. And if the desired outcome is not met, we make excuses, right, and we say that we start to point the finger on the other. Or if the desired outcome is met, then we're in a state of gratitude. But the true state of the believer should be that even in that state of trial and tribulation, they are thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before the response comes. In between intentions and our actions. Good intentions please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When bad intentions only uh, seek his displeasure. Why again? Because we're not seeking his pleasure per se. And in this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ mentions the hijrah as maybe we could say an extreme example. Because most of us are not traversing across the world. We're not crossing Mecca into the deserts of Medina. But the deeper behind, meaning behind this is that any situation that we're in, we shouldn't forget our, our uh, desire, right? The outcome, which for the believer again, uh, shouldn't be anyone but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But that we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to allow us to be people who are patient with His will. The intelligent person is one who keeps himself in check constantly and seeks and acts according to the afterlife. However, the foolish individual is one who follows his desires and places false hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And again, to clarify, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us in right, a material body. We live in the world and we do have desires and we do have pleasures. But again, what counts is the intention that we have behind each one of those actions. When we think about the time that we're spending or the places that we go to or the company that we seek, we need to constantly ask ourselves this question of where are we actually going? Is that desired place or that person our outcome or that goal? Or is there something deeper behind it? What are we truly trying to seek? And what is our mental, spiritual, emotional, and physical state in those situations? Are they truly states in which are pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that would align to what He is content with or would be content with? Or are we meeting those needs, mental, spiritual, emotional, or physical, again, just to make an end, me, an, an end me ends for us in this world. 
And there can be the specific examples that can be mentioned for each one of these things. But again, it's important, right? Especially for, again, those who are going to school, who just went back to school. I'm going back myself soon. Um, which is that when we go, right, into these spaces, when we keep the company that we do, when we surround ourselves uh, with our friends, right, what is our state in those moments? And are we people who are influencing others? Or are we people who are easily influenced by others? Right? Are we making an impact on those around us through our faith and through our character? Or are we giving into the desires that surround us? And I'm not saying it's an easy road. I'm not saying that high school or college um, today are necessarily easy places to be in. And this applies to the workspace as well. This applies in any given situation, any given circumstance or relationship. But at the heart of trial and tribulation, always remember this question, where am I going in this situation? And try to develop an inner voice with yourself. Try to listen to your heart. Develop a relationship with yourself as well. Don't neglect yourself in your emotional state, in your spiritual state, to satisfy somebody else. But ask yourself where you truly stand before trying to stand there for others. That comes as well. But that comes with a type of mutuality where when good company is surrounded by good company and good people are an influence to others, then naturally the circumstances allow you, around you won't even allow you to talk. Your state will be one that will naturally change others, inshallah. So with that we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us tawfiq, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us strong individuals in our faith, to make us strong in our circumstances. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us in this world, good in this world, and to give us good in the next world, Ya Rabbul Alameen. In Allah, Ya Rabbul Alameen, Wa Ihsani, Wa Ihtai, Wa Qurba, Wa Inha, Wa Ihsani, 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 Wa